Singapore faces a looming crisis. The Asian economic powerhouse is running out of fresh water. Growing faster than its current sources can supply. At the mercy of droughts and flooding, the country must find a solution that guarantees its future needs. It's attacking the problem on three fronts. One of the world's largest tunneling projects to collect and recycle raw sewage and convert it into drinking water. Asia's most advanced desalination plant to turn seawater into fresh. And the plan's greatest engineering feat, the Marina Barrage, a dam that will create the country's largest water catchment and prevent the city flooding. If this ambitious scheme works, it will be a man-made marvel. But getting there will push everyone to their limits. The island nation of Singapore was once a humble British trading post. It's transformed itself into a modern and vibrant country, a vital economic hub of Southeast Asia, home to more than four million people and growing. But this is one of the most densely populated countries on earth. Lack of size and space constantly hamper Singapore's ambitions locked in by the Malaysian Peninsula in the north and the South China Sea. The entire country is smaller than New York City. And that's a problem. The island doesn't have enough space to collect rainfall, a critical source of its water needs. Being in the equatorial belt, we get a lot of rain. We get 2.4 meters of rain a year. Although we get a lot of water, we don't have enough land to collect and store the water. And that's why water is something that's extremely important to us. The city-state has no alternative. It turns half its land into a rainfall catchment. They build 14 reservoirs and more than 7,000 kilometers of canals and drains. But it's barely enough to meet half its water needs. It signs a contract with its northern neighbor, Malaysia, to supply more water. A single pipeline transports the precious resource across the border. Neither solution provides Singapore with a secure water supply. The mission to quench the national thirst is never ending. In the 1960s, severe drought was a harsh reminder of their precarious position. During the dry period in around February, you know, there will be periods when the government decides that okay, we, have, we are running out of water and water had to be shut off for you know, days or weeks and uh, we all had to go and collect water on buckets and so on. From the very beginning, we knew that sooner or later we were going to face water problems. So immediately, we plan to dam up all the streams and rivers and to keep the catchment area clean. And I got a team together to consider how we can maximize our water resources on our own. The Prime Minister's team of leading scientists and engineers have to make Singapore self-sufficient in water, no matter how long it takes or how radical the solution. Today, the man leading that team is Ku Tang Chai. He carries on the mission begun by his predecessors almost 40 years ago. After decades of research, his engineers come up with a radical idea. We are a little island, right? Lots of rain, but not enough land to collect and store water. So where are we going to get the water from? Our strategy really was to find ways to collect more water from the sky, to get the water from the sea, and to recycle the water. 
Ku Teng Chai plans to attack the problem on three fronts. First, engineers will recycle water by tapping into Singapore's foulest resource, raw sewage. To make it clean enough to drink, they will need to build an innovative filtration system. Part two of the plan calls for engineers to turn the sea into their greatest ally by transforming salt water into fresh. But the most practical source of water still falls from the sky. Engineers will harness every last drop of rain by building a mega reservoir, the largest they have ever attempted. There's just one tiny problem, where to put it. With land so scarce, engineers realize there's only one way to go to dam up the mouth of one of their estuaries. The plan? To build a state-of-the-art dam. The Marina Barrage. Nine massive gates will trap seawater in the catchment zone. Over two years, rainfall will displace the seawater, turning the estuary into a gigantic freshwater reservoir. The Marina Barrage you know, is the one thing that really unifies uh, the Singapore water story. It's about how we tackle the problems of the past and it looks into the future. This is where engineers plan to build the barrage, Marina Bay. In the past, it was an important gateway to Singapore's commercial district. In the future, Marina Bay will become a multi-billion dollar entertainment hub featuring some of the best attractions in the world. But for that vision to become a reality, they have to complete the Marina Barrage. Engineers plan to dam off Marina Bay. Easier said than done. They'll have to design and install ingenious technology on a gigantic scale and they must build it in the South China Sea. The tides are a powerful enemy that will push the engineers to the limit. Water surrounds the island nation of Singapore. Yet it struggles to meet its fresh water needs. Now, engineers have come up with an ambitious plan to recycle the country's raw sewage, to turn seawater into tap water, and to collect and treat more rainfall than ever before. To achieve that, they must build the Marina Barrage, damming up their largest estuary and creating a 10,000 hectare mega reservoir. Armed with a $200 million budget, engineers begin construction. First up are geological and hydrological surveys. These will determine the site's soil conditions. Almost immediately, they hit a major obstacle. Marine clay. A soft soil layer found beneath many parts of Singapore. As we all know now that this area around Marina is actually underlain with a very thick layer of marine clay. It's something like tofu or, or toothpaste. If it's, it's, you step on it, it can't give you any support. There's very little support on the foundation, on anything. No one builds their house on soil as soft as toothpaste. But engineers Chu Xiu Meng and Chua Yi Hui have no choice. They have to overcome the problem or pay a terrible price. When the staff rushed to the window, they saw a cloud of dust rising no just outside. Been evacuated as a safety precaution. Brought out of the disaster area. 
In 2004, every Singaporean engineer's worst nightmare came true. It started with an underground explosion at about 3.30 p.m. today. Marine clay had a terrible impact on Nickel Highway, one of the city's busiest roads, killing four people. Investigators discovered that a deep excavation into marine clay at the highway was poorly reinforced, causing the devastating collapse. Marina Barrage engineers are desperate to avoid a similar fate. You don't fool around with marine clay. Here, we have a challenge. Every possible element in deep excavations that could cause a failure had to be taken into consideration. Down, down works on the... the team works round the clock to come up with a rock-solid solution. They decide to take the most direct approach, removing the problem altogether. First, we dredge it away. We dredge the marine clay off. Immediately, we fill with sand. Engineers begin digging a 10-meter deep trench below the seabed, removing tons of marine clay. Then they backfill the giant trench with a heavier and stronger material, sand. Sand is actually what we call a granular material. It is hard and durable. It's heavier than the marine clay. It provides us the kind of mass of weight that we require as well as the strength. They also reinforce the area with steel sheet piles. For the job, they rope in a heavy weight. The 12 ton Vibro Hammer. It punches the sheet piles deep into the seabed, making the foundation rock solid and resistant to movement. The Vibro Hammer rams thousands of sheet piles into the seabed before engineers can start the next phase of the project. Singapore also plans to create another source of fresh water. By tapping into the country's raw sewage at one central treatment plant. Groundbreaking filtration technology will turn raw sewage into water clean enough to drink. The plant must process over 600 million litres of sewage each day. The question is, how do you get that much sewage to a single plant? Shipping or trucking it is impractical. Engineers realize that their best option is to go underground, to build a new sewer system big enough to supply the plant's daily needs. Welcome to the Deep Tunnel Sewage System, or DTSS for short. An underground superhighway transporting all of Singapore's sewage 48 kilometers across the island to the plant. To avoid areas of unstable marine clay, engineers will have to dig deep deeper than any of Singapore's previous underground projects. It's deeper than our normal sewer pipes, it's deeper than cable tunnels, it's even deeper than our MRT tunnels. Our tunnel goes down to 30 to 50 meters down, that's like 11 to 19 stories below ground. Going deep throws up a massive challenge that could derail the entire project. Almost 20 stories of earth exert a phenomenal amount of pressure on the tunnel. Any miscalculation could cause a catastrophic cave-in, risking the lives of the construction crew and the fate of the $3 billion project. 
the main concern in all underground jobs is the soil condition, what you're going to go through. You've seen lots of horror stories where houses crack up or they fall into huge sinkholes. Things like that do happen if you don't control your project well. To avoid disaster 50 meters below the surface, engineers will have to come up with a foolproof plan. While DTSS engineers formulate their underground battle plan, their colleagues at the Marina Barrage prepare to face their next adversary, the South China Sea. They know it will do its utmost to destroy anything they put up. The challenges are definitely great for us. The tide, the current, the waves makes the work more difficult here. The engineers debate every conceivable way to keep the sea at bay. Only one solution seems viable. A waterproof steel structure called a cofferdam. This temporary structure surrounds the worksite with a wall of steel sheet piles. An impenetrable steel fortress locks out the sea, keeping the workers safe within. But this will be no ordinary cofferdam. Engineers plan to build it without any supporting struts. In normal cofferdams, rows of struts support the sides. But they are bulky and a serious obstacle to large construction equipment. With the strut, it obstructs the free movement of our heavy machineries like our boring rigs and our cranes. No struts mean heavy machinery can move freely. That speeds up the work enormously. But without struts, engineers need to find another way to support the coffer dam walls. There's only one answer. They'll have to drill the walls even deeper. Time for the 12-ton vibro hammer to strut its stuff again. To build a self-supporting coffer dam, it drives the sheet piles more than 40 meters into the seabed. Everything seems to go according to plan. Then, disaster strikes. A newly built section of the coffer dam begins to tilt. My God, I thought it was an absolute disaster at that time. We had sleepless night, not only myself, my whole team of engineers. Their arch nemesis has undermined the fortress. The South China Sea is poised to wash away the entire site. Engineers scramble to conduct an extensive soil investigation. Somehow, marine clay has mixed with seawater to become an even more unstable slurry. This slurry is something that is even softer than marine clay. You, know? you scoop it out, basically you flow, flow out. Engineers realize that a few pockets of slurry hidden beneath the coffer dam escape detection. This caused the coffer dam to be weakened. There was one soft spot that we missed and it caused the biggest scare of our life. We are planning to come, come in from both sides. Huh? I mean, Faced uh, with imminent collapse, engineers activate immediate countermeasures. Come from the coffer dam top and drive and fill up from there. First, they construct a row of supporting struts inside the wall to give it extra reinforcement. Then they truck in tons upon tons of rocks, dumping them on both sides of the wall to counteract the tilting structure. The engineer's quick thinking finally stabilizes the coffer dam, much to their relief. That incident taught us to show greater respect for marine clay here. 
Thank God it was not extensively across the whole coffer dam. Engineers have an ambitious plan to solve Singapore's water shortage. Recycling raw sewage into water, turning seawater into fresh, and building a state-of-the-art dam. The Marina Barrage. It will have nine giant gates, each more than 20 meters high. They trap seawater in Marina Bay, which will be displaced by rainwater, turning the bay into a vast freshwater reservoir. Ironically, these same gates could create a new water problem. Flooding. Since the 1960s, floods have regularly plagued Singapore, turning large parts of the city into disaster zones. As a small boy, I remember that during the monsoon period in December, you get too much water, and then the canals overflowed and you, you get flooding. So we had all the problems of water, you know, either too little or too much. The area most prone to inundation is the highly built-up business district around Marina Bay. If barrage gates trap too much water in the bay during heavy rain, it could bring Singapore's economy to its knees. Engineers face a conundrum. How can they keep fresh water in and prevent floods at the same time? In London, the success of the Thames Barrier floodgates inspires them.